Fossil records provide a window into the past, providing glimpses into the evolution of life that has taken place over billions of years. Fossils are preserved remains or impressions of an organism that lived in the past. The fossil record shows that there have been great changes in the types of organisms that lived on Earth at different points in time. The fossil record also documents how new groups of organisms evolved from previously existing ones. Despite the significance of the fossil record in showing us how certain organisms change over long periods of time, we must keep in mind that it is an incomplete record of evolutionary change, as many organisms did not form fossils. The odds of becoming a fossil were better for hard-shelled marine species than for small, land-dwelling organisms or organisms that only had soft body tissues. Furthermore, where the organism died also determined where the fossil was formed, as specific conditions are required for fossilization to occur. Of those fossils that were formed, many were destroyed by later geologic processes and of those that remain, only a fraction have been discovered. There are two main types of fossils, body fossils and trace fossils. Body fossils are typically hard tissues, such as teeth, bones, or shells that were not consumed by other organisms or subject to decay. Trace fossils include burrows, tracks, footprints, tooth marks, or fecal matter, known as coprolites. The fossilization process is as follows. First, the organism died in or near a body of water. The body was covered quickly by sediment, and layers of sediment accumulated over time. The sediment came under pressure and formed sedimentary rock. Over time, the remains of the organism would have been mineralized to form a fossil. It is possible for fossils to be preserved in igneous rock, which is rock formed by the cooling and solidification of volcanic ash, metamorphic rock, which is rock formed from other rocks by heat and pressure, or sedimentary rock, rock formed through the sediment being deposited and solidifying. Most fossil formations are found in sedimentary rock, which consists of several layers of superimposed rock called strata or stratum for singular. According to the law of fossil succession, fossils fall into a hierarchy in which younger fossils succeed older fossils vertically in rock strata. While the order of the fossils in rock strata tell us the sequence in which fossils were laid down, it doesn't reveal their actual or absolute ages. We can find out the age of a fossil in one of two ways, either by relative dating or absolute dating. Relative dating involves establishing whether a fossil is older or younger than a reference, which might be a rock layer or an easily dated fossil. For example, ammonites are considered index fossils because they lived only between 245 million years ago and 65 million years ago. Rock layers found with ammonite fossils must be within that same age range, and so we can conclude that other fossils found in the same rock layer must have lived within that same time frame. In general, if layers of rock are undisturbed, rock in the lower layers is older than rock in the upper layers, so the layer in which a fossil is found also helps determine the fossil's relative age. Absolute dating is more exact, but dates in geologic time are spans of time, not specific dates. Determining absolute age is done with radiometric dating, the scientific process of using the half-life of radioactive elements to establish the absolute age of a fossil. Rocks contain trace amounts of radioactive elements that decay at specific rates, starting from when the rock was formed. An example of a commonly used radioactive element is carbon-14, which has a half-life of 5,730 years. When an organism dies, the amount of carbon-14 it contains at the time of death slowly decays to become another element, nitrogen-14. Carbon-14 is known as the parent isotope, and nitrogen-14 is known as the daughter isotope. So for example, say the amount of carbon-14 found in a bone specimen is 25% and the amount of nitrogen-14 is 75%. We know that starting out, the bone would have contained 100% of the parent isotope. After the half-life of 5,730 years, this would have been halved to 50%. 
and after two half-life periods, the amount of carbon-14 would be 25%. So the age of the bone is two half-life periods, or 11,460 years old. The fossil record shows that most of the species that have ever lived are now extinct. Extinction is a necessary and natural occurrence in Earth's evolutionary history, and five mass extinctions are documented in the fossil record over the past 500 million years. These events are called the Big Five, or the Five Great Extinctions, and each accounted for the loss of most living organisms on Earth. The five great mass extinctions are known as the Ordovician, Devonian, Permian, Triassic, and Cretaceous events. They resulted from different causes, but the results were the same, the loss of the majority of existing living species. Current extinction rates are such that scientists are concerned that Earth may soon experience a sixth mass extinction. The combination of human factors and global climate change may produce a cascading event in which extinctions continue to occur exponentially. How this will ultimately impact humans and the Earth is still unclear.